Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and bioproducts industries. Welcome to our exciting Spectrum podcast, where we will be talking about making tissue production safe. I am Mark Rushton and I will be your host. As we all know, there has been a constant increase in performance and capacities of tissue machines and processors over recent times. Very importantly, safety measures have also had to keep up with this increase in speed and performance. But it doesn't stop there. Manufacturers have also had to contend with increasing regulations in regard to safety as the topic gains maximum significance in industrial production. So today we are delighted to bring you two experts who know all there is to know about tissue mill safety. So welcome, Andreas Banovzek, CEO from consulting company CE Beratung, and Thomas Naga, machine safety expert at Andritz. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's great to be here. So, Andreas, let's start with you. Can you talk about the importance of CE marking? Yes, of course, Mark. The manufacturer of a product must ensure that no hazards are caused by the product. And this is law. In Austria, we have the Product Liability Act and the Product Safety Act. Manufacturers are only allowed to place safe products on the market. And uh, on the other side, the person who uses the product must also know that the product is safe. The manufacturer must do a risk assessment to minimize all hazards. At the end of the complete risk assessment process, the CE mark must be attached to the product. When a product has been CE marked by the manufacturer, the user knows that it complies with all applicable directives and regulations from the European Union. At the end, the most important thing is that the operator of the machine feels safe at work and that no accidents happen. Okay, thanks for that uh, comprehensive summary, really, of, uh, of CE marking. Can you now tell us about the process of applying a CE mark? What does it actually involve? Yes, when somebody does a risk assessment, the person has to consider many points. It's a very detailed process to do a risk assessment for a complex machine. But the basic layout is always the same. At first, the risk assessor has to identify the hazards. There are hazardous situations and hazardous events. Then the person has to do the risk estimation. For this, there are two parameters, the severity of harm and the probability of occurrence. And that means how badly can you get hurt and what is the probability of getting hurt. And then there must be the risk reduction. And for this, there are three steps. At first, the inherently safe design, for example, to deburr a sharp edge or something. Then the design is inherently safe. If this is not possible, then the next step would be to safeguard or complementary protective measures taken. For example, it is not possible to reach the hazard location when there is a safeguard in front of the machine. This measure contains also functional safety, for example, such as photoelectric sensors that switch off the machine. If this is also not possible or when there are residual risks, then the operator must be informed. There could be a pictogram at the machine or a note in the operating instructions. But it's very important to do these three steps in exactly this order. It's not possible only to put a pictogram at the machine and say everything is safe. Wow, it's clearly an in-depth process. So how long would the formation of a CE mark actually take place? I mean, I know that's like a, a how long is a piece of string, but can you give us an idea of how long? That depends on the machine. It's parallel to the whole construction and planning phase of the machine from the beginning to the end. Okay, thank you. Thomas, um, now moving on to you. Health and safety as an entity has come a long way over the last decades. Can you tell us a little bit about Andrit's overall approach to safety? Uh, so the first part uh, we think of when we think about safety is, of course, the operators. 
So um, a safe machine ensures the, the safety uh, of the operators and the surrounding environment. And so uh, also no matter um, what country we deliver our products to, um, we always design them to the higher safety standards to make sure uh, every operator is safe the same way. Um, the, then the next would be uh, a safe machine also ensures a reliable process. So um, the second approach would be the, the runnability of the machine. And um, you also don't want any downtime due to safety issues. So to create the maximum output, um, you want to have the safest machine possible. And obviously, uh, the, the third approach uh, is you need a safe machine to fulfill the legal requirements. When you think uh, over the last, I would say, uh, 25 years, much has changed in the approach uh, of having a safe machine. Nowadays, the safety relies much more on the machine. So the goal is to take out the, the, the human element as much as possible and as much as useful. Also, preventing operators from manipulating uh, safety measures has become a big part of uh, safety engineering and has also helped to ensure better safety. Yeah, very interesting. So really what you're saying there is a safer machine is obviously a more productive machine, which is very important to the whole process. For sure, yeah. Um, ends up being a win-win all around. So now moving on to the actual tissue machines themselves, um, can you tell us the areas that Andritz concentrates on when it comes to keeping tissue machines safe? So uh, if you think of a tissue machine and the different sections of, of it, you will notice you have to find different solutions for, for those sections. Um, so the approach to get a safe machine is in, in order to three steps. Um, so the first step would be, as we already heard, uh, to find an inherently safe design. So you avoid the hazardous location to even occur by the design. Uh, second would then be to mount guards or fences. Um, when there is no interaction needed. And the, the third one would then be um, to implement functional safety if interaction is needed. So you can't always uh, find uh, an inherently safe solution. Uh, also, you need to think of the different phases of life of the, the machine, uh, like the normal operation or maintenance or cleaning. And, uh, or especially on, on tissue machines, uh, space is often an issue. So um, you must think of a solution when um, safety distances can't be fulfilled. So even though uh, an inherently safe design is always the goal to reach, you could say, um, you often have to think of different solutions. And an example would be uh, functional safety may seem as the perfect solution, but you also have to think of that it comes with a higher cost and it has to be... Um, maintained regularly. Okay, well, thanks for that, Thomas. Um, can you give us any examples of safety actually in action on tissue machines? Yeah, so uh, one, one good example would be the real section um, where the interaction of, of the operator with the machine is often necessary. And so you have to implement functional safety as the right solution. So how does it work here is um, the... You have a completely fenced uh, real section and a door with an interlock function. And the operator has to, to, to push a button to signal the machine that he wants to enter the uh, area. Uh, afterwards, the, the machine will stop some certain movements or interlock them and the operator can go inside of the fence. Um, when he has finished his work, he can go back through the door and after he closed it, he has to push the button again um, to signal the machine that it can be go back into normal operation. Uh, another example would be our fully cantilevered shoe press. Here, uh, the maintenance is the uh, interesting process. Uh, here, thanks to the design, the operators are able to do maintenance work like a belt change, belt change, um, without handling with additional uh, lifting equipment. So 
uh, this makes the, the process of maintenance way more safe and, and also faster. Okay, so I mean, the, the, you're opening our eyes. There's a lot of work that goes on in the safety areas of tissue machines, that's for sure. So, so thank you very much for that. Um, another thing which is, uh, uh, obviously you do a lot of work on safety regulations which seem to move quite fast. Um, how does Andritz approach the various safety requirements and regulations across the globe when it comes to the design of tissue machines? So uh, for every machine, um, the, the European standards are always the basis. Uh, we want to ensure that every machine has the same safety standard, no matter where we deliver it to. Uh, but anyways, there are cases uh, where the national regulations uh, of the country we, the machine will be delivered to uh, differ from the European standard. So then, of course, you have to take a look uh, into the regulations and adopt the solution to the standard uh, to fulfill the legal basis is there. Uh, to name an example uh, would be um, Brazil with the NR12, uh, which differs in some point from the European standard. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, Andreas, how do you find out about these new regulations? I mean, it must be a minefield. You must do a lot of reading and writing and listening. Yes, if we're doing uh, risk assessments for other countries outside the European Union, then we have to comply with the respective national safety standards, as Thomas said, for Brazil, the NR12. Then between Chile and, and the European Union, there is a commercial agreement, a special commercial agreement. And uh, new directives and regulations are published directly by the European Union. There is an official journal, so we get the information. Uh, new standards are published by the committee. News are communicated by newsletters mostly. And we, business consulants, receive support from the Austrian Federal Economic Chamber. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, Andreas. So, Thomas, um, can you tell us what services Andritz offers in the area of health and safety for tissue producers? Yes, yeah, so besides delivering the, the newest and with the latest state-of-the-art uh, equipped safe machines, uh, we also do offer uh, rebuilds of machines or sections of machines. Uh, here we always have the urge to find the best solution for the customer and deliver with the best safety equipment to update the safety of the machine. Uh, and we also do offer uh, safety audits on machines um, where we look for solutions to upgrade the safety without disabling the runability of the machine. Okay, thank you for that, Thomas. Um, so now a question for both of our experts to finish. What is on your horizon in health and safety for tissue machine topics in the future? So um, the next big thing we're looking forward to uh, is the, the new machine directive. Um, but to be precise, uh, that's, um, it's the new machine regulation and not anymore the directive. So there will be a change. Uh, from a directive to a regulation, and it should be published this year. And then exactly 42 months and 20 days after publishing um, the, the new regulation, it will come into effect. So with the end of 2026, the now um, machine directive will come out of force Yes, uh, with the new machinery regulation, a few things will change. There will be a new attachment order and a completely new process for high-risk machines. Uh, digital operating instructions are discussed in more detail. Uh, risks arising from the autonomous behavior of machines become important. In the regulation, it is called self-evolving behavior. <laughs> so, and we are looking forward to this because it will make machines much safer. Okay, clearly we're moving into a new world of uh, autonomous operation. Thank you very much indeed for that. So clearly, safety is a very important complex issue. Yes, we have to make sure that all safety measures are in place when it comes to the tissue production environment, 
but it also gives confidence to know that the machinery, equipment and processes being invested in at a tissue mill have been through a rigorous process to ensure that they're as safe as could possibly be. And of course, very importantly, that they conform to all legal requirements. So should any of our valued listeners wish to find out more, please feel free to visit our website. You can find the link in the show notes of this episode. That was an excellent discussion, and I'd like to thank our experts, Andreas and Thomas, for sharing all your deep knowledge. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And thank you to all our listeners, and goodbye. Goodbye.